Welcome to the Burke Brigade. This is Matthew Burke. And this is Jennifer Burke. Today is Monday, August 14th, 2017. Welcome to the Burke Brigade, brought to you by the <laughs> Liberty Daily. <laughs> I wish you could see my husband's face. He's so happy to be bringing you the Burke Brigade right now. The LibertyDaily.com. Your drudge alternative. Your conservative drudge alternative. Thank you for adding that. Hey everybody, it's an exciting evening here at the Burke Brigade World Headquarters in beautiful, what was a sunny day in Arizona after some very rare rain this weekend. Can you believe how quick those weeds popped up in our yard? Insanity. I mean, most of the yards here in the desert part of Arizona are covered in rocks. I mean, it makes it a little bit hard to mow your lawn, but (laughs) one of the benefits is you don't have weeds. And it rained for a couple days here, it's monsoon season, and we went out, I mean, literally this jungle appeared. Like overnight. Yeah, literally overnight, or in a couple, three days. It was just absolute, absolutely insane. Well, we're going to talk about several different, really crazy, insane, but yet interesting news stories today and give our perspective on what's going on. And uh, the great Jennifer Burke here, you've probably maybe seen her on Fox News and she was on Fox and Friends several times. She was on Hannity a while back. She's done... A, a lot of radio. She is the liberals' worst nightmare. I know you can't see through your listening device, but she is a powerful, and might I add, quite attractive <laughs> Thanks, man. black conservative woman. You know that reminds me a, a little bit. And I am, I am an uh, an evil white male. But like my uncle George used to say. <laughs> I like we go we go out for breakfast and the waitress would come wait on us and she'd say how do you like your coffee sir and he'd look her straight in the eyes and he would say I like my coffee like I like my women hot and black patriarchy <laughs> and I resemble my uncle George in that way because hmm. I like my women hot and black Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. And I must say, I'm not at all offended by him calling me a woman. I'm actually one of the sane people out there who believes in God's creation, that there are two genders, male and female. There are two pronouns to describe people, he and she. None of this Z, she, V, E, ich. Whatever the heck they're talking about. Oh, you're such a bigot. Oh, I can't be a bigot. Ter- ter- Eric Holder said it is impossible because I am black. Uh, all right. So take that, liberals. All right, cool. Hey, you had, uh, we wanted to start out here, speaking of bigots, there was a Confederate statue topple tonight. Do you want to tell us about that? Oh, my goodness. You know what? Unlike. Rachel Dole is all. I know I've mentioned her before. The fake black former NAACP president. Oh, you really got a thing for her. Spokane. Yeah, because on the one hand, these. You idi- mention her like every night. On the one hand, these idiot liberals are like, Rachel Dole is all. You think you're black? More power to you, girl. Welcome to blackness. And on the other hand, Kim Kardashian, and I'm not a Kim Kardashian fan, you had the nerve to wear cornrows, cultural appropriation. Yeah, they can't what is even, a, what is cultural appropriation I, I and what is not? I, I have absolutely. No I mean, idea. if if you if you take over their race and pretend to be a racial or a skin tone that you're not, a nationality that you're not, a race that you're not, that's not cultural appropriation. But wearing your hair a certain style is. Or, as some. Other idiots. They need a mental checkup. They need a mental checkup. Hoop earrings. Hoop earrings, according to some idiot leftists, it's also cultural appropriation. Okay, let's. Can we get off your Rachel Dolezal (laughs) obsession and talk about this? (laughs) 
Okay, so Let's I'm not great about to dolls the, uh, at all. The I've been black section. my whole life. I've been black. I was born black. I was raised black. I'm black. I'm blacker than the first half black president of the United States, Barack Obama. Oh my gosh, our first half black president. <laughs> but I'm a black conservative, so many liberals do not see me as black. But anyway, I grew up in the South. I grew up in Texas. I remember driving by the statue of Sam Houston by Sam Houston University and just being in awe of it. It was so huge. It was great. I remember going on vacation once I was older and um, driving through the South, going to Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, going to the University of Virginia, going to Virginia Tech, going to all these historical places and just thinking, wow, this is our history. This is the history of the United States. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. And as you have and you said... you can't change it. You can't change it. As you have said many times, honey. Um, Please say something smart that I said. No, it was. It was great. But then all of a sudden, Ray barked, and I, I just kind of lost it. Oh, it's all right. Uh, oh, we did not. The United States of America did not invent slavery, but we did end it. Right. We did end it. Right. Slavery so, went on for thousands of years before the, the United Jews States. Were slaves. Yeah. We did not invent slavery. It was certainly, you know, wrong, obviously, that there was slavery slavery in America, but but it was uh, almost everywhere. And we didn't, slaves we didn't that came over from Africa were sold by other African blacks. To America. Well, you mean they had slavery there too? Yes. Was that Black, right? Blacks on blacks. Was that racist? Eric Holder said it couldn't be. Guess it's not then. Okay. So anyway, can we talk so about the people, uh, the statue? These people. Okay, you know, we heard what happened in in, in Charlotte, uh, Charlotte um, this weekend. Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Sorry. Virginia. Oh, Charlottesville. That's right. That's right. Charlottesville, Virginia. I've been there. Univer University of Virginia. Beautiful. Thomas Jefferson's uh, founded university. And he had white nationalists that were that were marching for white lives matter. You know, you might not agree with their message, but they have a First Amendment right to say it. And the fact of the matter Even is, though scum. these these people that came uh, to counter protest actually put them more on the map. That's what brought the media out. The media wouldn't have been there if it would have just been them there. It would have been a non-event. It would have been small. No one would have cared. But unfortunately, it turned to this big hoopla. And sadly, one one woman was killed by a guy who, uh, you know, turns out was a Nazi sympathizer. So now, in response to everything that that happened in Charlottesville, people in Durham, North Carolina, decided it would be a good idea. They they just want to take matters into their own hands and tear down Confederate statues. This mob. So they actually lynched. They lynched. I don't think they realized the irony of their actions. They lynched a Confederate statue. They put a rope around his neck, and they pulled it down. Now, one thing we know for certain, Democrats have been trying to rewrite their racist history for decades. If you go to the Democrats' uh, website, they actually claim, it's a wonder lightning doesn't strike every single computer at the DNC, they claim that they have been fighting for civil rights for decades. That is not true. Democrats voted against the Civil Rights Act. Democrats started the KKK. Democrats have 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 turned have gone from slavery of blacks, um, you know, by the whip in the fields to slavery of blacks by welfare and housing projects. So to me, all this that's happening right now it, it the Confederacy is part of our history. It is. You learn from history. But Democrats in the school system, as they have taken over school systems across America, have tried to rewrite history. In Texas, conservatives had to fight to, 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 for a history textbook that talked about the founding fathers because Democrats didn't want the founders in, in, in that. Democrats have tried to write themselves out of their racist history. And if you ask me... All this animosity, all this tearing down of Confederate statues, Ray, zip it. mayors ordering down, and these people lynching this Confederate statue in Durham, North Carolina, and pulling it down. It's just another attempt of Democrats to strike their racism out of history. They are the ones. If you doubt that Democrats are the real racists, all you have to do is look at their response to people like Alan West. Look at their response to people like Condoleezza Rice. 
the response to people like Tim Scott, um, Tim Scott. Senator Tim, Tim Scott. Scott, Senator Tim Scott, who was who was uh, raised by a single poor mom, and the NAACP in South Carolina accused him of not believing in civil rights. Yeah, it's unreal. And it's, by the way, let me just jump something in here. I'm looking at this. If you go to the right scoop, you'll see it under uh, the headline, Not Good, Protesters Topple Confederate Statue in Durham, then start stomping on it and giving it the bird. And the right scoop has got video of this, and there are several tweets that they've embedded here. And one of the the big signs these uh, this mob is carrying says no Trump, no KKK, hmm. no racist in mm-hmm. USA. You know, one thing about these commies, they can do their rhymes. You you have to hand it to them. But then at the bottom, you'll notice a website. Hmm. www.workers.org. Oh. Ooh, now, it, if you means. go to workers.org, hmm. it's a communist front group Shut affiliated up. with the Communist Party USA. If you think these sons of bitches care about the color of your skin, they don't. If you think they care about racism, say it. They what? don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They are using They're communists. black people to try to further their agenda. Yeah, they are the ones. Look, look, look at how they are towards uh, towards the Jews. Look at how they are towards Israel. Look at how they were, are towards Netanyahu. They look at you know. I know that sadly there are many uh, Jews who are cult- culturally Jewish who are who are Democrats, but uh, the Democrats are not friends of the Jews. Just like they aren't friends of women. Just like they aren't friends of blacks. They use people as pawns. Period. They use people as pawns to further their racist, divisive, misogynistic agenda. They wanna they wanna make women believe that the only the the only way that they have a voice is to talk about their genitals. That's it. Right. So they're not, Democrats are not your friend. They're communists. And you think CNN and Anderson Cooper is going to talk about that work? No, 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 no. Website? no. They no. are por- portraying, uh, just like the, they did in uh, Charlottesville, Charlottesville, they portrayed the counter-protest to the racist neo-Nazi fascists and that is what they are but, but there are two sides to this yep. there's the antifa, antifa. the antifa but they were just they were just out there Boy Scout. protesting against hate. hate hate don't work don't think about the fact that they were all dressed in black and burning buildings and cars and throwing concrete blocks at police officers in berkeley just now what you have ago. here you have a classic struggle between two parties on the left and these are both on the left they're not on the right don't be lied to they both want to use the power of big government they both want to use leftist ideology to accomplish their racist and anti-american means do not be duped you have a classic situation where you have the fascists versus the communists Mm -hmm. and that in a nutshell is what it is you have you know the neo-nazis you know these skinhead losers absolute scum of society fighting these george soros paid goons that have been wrecking havoc in in american cities for for years years you know whether it's seattle whether it's uh, Ferguson, whether it's Baltimore, whether it's Portland, whether it's whether it's Berkeley, these commie bastards have been out to destroy America for years. And my understanding is these these racist neo Nazi types have been doing these rallies in in Virginia for years. They used the uh, the, the the plan to tear down the Robert E. Lee statue as, as an excuse. excuse to show up and expand their group this year. And that's why if you read the reports, most of those people in these in these Nazi racist groups, 
they were not even from Virginia. No, just like the most, yeah. The, not, the, not the guy that ran Virginia. over the people was, was from, from Ohio. Ohio. Ohio, right. <clears throat> so the fact that the left is trying to recreate history, trying to bury history by, you know, toppling these statues that are part of America, you know, like it or, or hate it, they are, are monuments to our history, both good and bad, is actually giving fuel to these racist hate groups right. on both the left and, and the right. And it's, it's being bankrolled by George Soros, yep. who would love to start a race war in America right. so that so he, he can, can come in and short the currency yep. probably, you know, or use some other strategy to get even richer. Yeah, yeah. These uh, the Democrats have learned how to manipulate, how to dupe, how to fool people into thinking one thing while they're really just using them as pawns for their sick, disgusting, warped game just to gain ultimate power. They want people to feel victimized. I don't walk by a statue of Robert, for heaven's sake. I grew up watching the Dukes of Hazard while I was a child in Texas. I'll never forget my brother, Michael, running into my room and saying, Jennifer, Jennifer, you got to come see this cool car. And it was one of our favorite shows, absolute favorite shows growing up. Period. It was. I don't walk by those statues and get triggered. I recognize that it's part of our history, a history from which we evolved. We, most of us evolved, except for the Democrats, who want... To think, you know, am I supposed to believe that a 22-year-old guy in 2017 feels triggered and, and, and afraid when they, when, they, when they walk by a Confederate statue? If that's the case, you should feel triggered and afraid when you walk by any Democrat because that is their party's history. That's right. They're just trying to erase their racist history from the face of the earth, and you people who are falling for it are showing them just what duped idiots you are. <laughs> Dang, honey. That's tough. Okay, now tell me this. There's a statue of Vladimir Lenin, communist butcher, uh, USSR commie anti-rights butcher, literally slaughtered millions in Seattle, in the Fremont area. Now, I lived in the Seattle area for 32 years. I have personally walked by and Ask seen by. this. If any... If any statue needs to be toppled, yep, it's they that. toppled it. They toppled it over what country? Overseas, remember? Yeah, yeah, but not in Seattle. When, when, but here's what when the USSR fell, because leftists, you know why? They're more communist in Seattle than they than they are in Russia. Nobody touches this damn thing. He's yeah. there. He's there bigger in life. It's been there since Ridiculous. the 1990s. He's not part of American history. Nope. And unlike the Robert I love E. Lee the way statue. You're pointing, by the way. The, and I'm pointing with my middle finger, I confess. This bun of a sitch is there, and he hated America. Hated. He hates freedom. He hates everything America. But it's ours. And he's this being glorified. This is, this is, is not that, like Robert E. Lee, part of American exactly. history. This is not part of American this history. This is how I've heard uh, leftist Seattleites defend it. It's just art. There's nothing more to it. It's art. Art. No, it is sending a message. It's saying that Seattle, Washington, the far left kooks of Seattle, Washington, are aligned with Vladimir Lenin. They applaud him every single time, every single day, every single minute, every single second. That statue stands in the city. They are applauding Vladimir Lenin and his his butcher tactics. Now listen to this. I'm reading from Wikipedia here. There's actually a Wikipedia page on the statue of Lenin in Seattle. And uh, while Wikipedia may not always be 100% accurate, I've been there, so I know it's accurate. The statue was constructed by a Bulgarian sculptor, Emil Venkov, under a 1981 commission from the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia. Mm. While following the bounds of his commission, Venkov intended to portray Lenin as a bringer of the revolution in contrast to the traditional portrayals of Lenin as a philosopher and an educator. He's not an educator. Mm. He's not a philosopher. He's a 
butcher. butcher. Good Lord. But yet, why don't you ever see the left condemn this? Why don't you ever see the left? Because it's, it's the part of their Be, history that they want to celebrate. No, the reason why is they are communists. Yes, they want to celebrate He's it. He's a god to them. They want to celebrate it. You know? Uh, and you know what? Obama, he settled for fascism because he couldn't implement communism. But in his heart, if you study his history, if you study his past associations, his past quotes, he is a diehard communist. And that's why in eight years of Obama, mm -hmm. you never heard him condemn communism once. You heard even Democrat Bill Clinton, you heard tons of Democrats over the years condemn communism. And of course, Republicans. You never, ever heard Obama condemn no, communism. No. And you never, you know, was Trump's initial statement about what happened in Charlottesville weak? You know, perhaps. But then the next day he released another statement. I didn't and think the, it was and weak. And the media wants to fixate on his first statement. They never once asked Obama to condemn Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter was constantly described by the, by the leftist media, by the Democrat media complex, got rest Andrew Breitbart's soul, as mostly peaceful. Mostly peaceful as they're setting fire to cars and buildings and lootings and looting stories. Mostly peaceful as they're chanting about killing cops. That was described as mostly peaceful by Anderson Pooper Scooper at oh CNN and, and, and all bigot. his other Such idiots. All the other idiots at CNN who are nothing but Democrat lackeys. And you know what? Obama... His statements, at, you know, Trump is, and I'm no Trump licker, you know, I will support him when I think he's right, and I will criticize him when I think he's wrong. By the way, that's what every American should do, in my humble opinion. But remember Obama's statements after Ferguson? I mean, we were watching this stuff at that time, mm -hmm. and we would sit there and say, where is he? Right. Why isn't he making a statement? In Baltimore, oh. I looked it up today. And it took him three days to respond. That happened on the 25th, I think, of April, if I'm remembering correctly, 2015. He responded on the 28th. So it was three days. There was no outrage. No. I'm going to write about this tomorrow. There was nothing. There was no was outrage. The president's statement. Why is he? Why isn't he out here? I'm outraged. Why isn't he specifically calling yeah, what did out Harrison Cooper these say black today? hate groups? One thing we've learned from the president today is that he fails to condemn, you know, Nazis, whatever. What about what about Obama after after the Muslim terrorist went into a doctor's office on the Fort Hood Army base, knowing that no one in there was armed because guns weren't allowed? And shot people, killing, I think, 12 or 13. Um, Obama, later that night, gave a speech. He was giving a speech not far from there. What did he do? He cracked a joke. His opening line, I the then president that. of the United States, he cracked a joke. Oh, honey, there was no that's outrage. Why, that's why I pay you the big bucks. I, no, I, I did not remember that. <laughs> there was no outrage from CNN over that. There was no, this is inappropriate. There was no, what, is this showing that... That, that he condones the actions of this Muslim terrorist. Why is he calling it workplace violence? Why won't he call it for what it is? It's not radicals. Not, no, none of that. None of that. He was, you know, oh, he's Obama, the crooner in cheese. Which, which just dovetails perfectly. Eric Holder, the only sitting uh, attorney general in American history to be condemned by 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 Congress. What do you call it? I know, but I can't think of it. Oh. I can't think of it either. Oh, held in contempt. Contempt. Thank you. Sorry for the pause there. Held in contempt of Congress. The only Attorney General. That is his legacy. He had the gall to tweet on Saturday mm. about this Charlottesville thing. If ISIS rammed the car into a crowd... This would be labeled quickly and logically. Logically? Not by him. Let me, let me finish. Charlottesville, call it what it is. Domestic terrorism. That's fine. I don't have any problem calling that domestic terrorism. But remember what remember what he called Fort Hood? 
workplace, workplace violence. Workplace violence. Workplace the guy was literally and, shouting and, 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 and the Allahu Akbar. And the ramifications of him calling it workplace violence meant that survivors of that terrorist attack, which Obama refused to call it that, and families of the victims who perished at the hands of the Muslim terrorists did not receive Purple Heart benefits. Some of them couldn't even receive the medical care that they needed, all because Barack Obama was siding with the Muslim terrorists and refusing to call it radical Islamic terrorism, refusing to call it a terrorist attack, and instead calling it workplace violence, even though, as you said, honey, he uh, the, the terrorists said Allahu Akbar many times as he was shooting. Yeah, we may never know the motive. We may never, we may never, oh, 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 oh. we never we know, may, we may never know, but I, here, I have this, knock, knock, violence. I have this knock, knock joke for you. Good gosh. So this, uh, this is on Twitchy. It's pretty funny. David Berge, who is one of the best. Iowa Hawk blog. Yeah, at Iowa Hawk blog, Hawk blog is sincerely owns Twitter pretty much. And he tweeted, maybe you should set this one out, Mr. Workplace Violence, (laughs) to Eric Holder. Boom. Boom. And Jay Caruso tweeted, uh, I think he might be with Red State or somebody. Anyway, uh, he writes somewhere. I apologize. I can't look it up right now. But he tweeted back to Holder, seriously, it's not like some guy shot up a military base and people tried to call it Workplace Violence. Oh, wait. (laughs) <laughs> uh, here, here's somebody else deplorable Don Serber at Don Serber S-U-R-B-E-R Fort Hood Boston San Bernardino Orlando not once did your administration quickly say domestic terrorism empty suit cheap one at that boom so uh, this is hypocrisy uh, Trump you know tried to uh, toss the media a bone today. He completely called out the the Nazi terrorism, the neo Nazis, whatever whatever the hell they are today, and it did absolutely no good. And and in my opinion, the reason why is because the media, the Democrat media complex, is pissed that he called out both sides. It's not that he didn't mention them by name. He called out violence on, quote, many sides. Right. They don't want... They, the, the media they has don't, offered... They want to hide their violence. ...has offered a protectionist cocoon to the Black Lives Matter terrorists for years. They have. They describe their actions as mostly peaceful. They could be setting cars on fire, them, and the media would say... Well, it's mostly peaceful. Those were just a few outliers. They weren't even from the area. They could be looting stores. Oh, it was mostly peaceful. Those were just, you know, they didn't represent the movement. And then they talk about that's the so Tea stupid. Party. That's such a they, stupid they, argument. I mean, that's like saying, well, not all Germans were Nazis. It doesn't matter. Right. Then they talk about the Tea Party who left areas more clean than when they when they got there. You couldn't even find a gum, yeah. gum wrapper on couldn't there or a cigarette butt on the ground. Rapper, you know. No violence. They, they never had any violence. They described but they were violent. us as... As prone to terrorists. violence, possible violence, terrorists, arsonists, you know, but you had the uh, occu- you believe in occupy, the Constitution. occupy Wall Street uh, rape free zones. Rape tents. Rape free zones. Come here, you're free from rape. Oh, but it's mostly, it's mostly, uh, mostly civil, mostly. Uh. Lord, Lord help us. I'm going to play this here. Molly, Molly Hemingway, who I think is one of the most brilliant, uh, commentators uh, what do you say yeah she's great she's with the Federalist she's also a Fox News contributor let's play this because she talks a little bit about uh, President Trump's statement the initial one let's just play this I guess I should turn the volume on eh? what Donald Trump actually said on Saturday. Here, let, and let's not, go back. They're Start not over. reading the actual full comments that he's living in an alternate reality here. People are taking, they're not listening to what Donald Trump actually said on Saturday. And they're not, they're not reading the actual full comments that he gave where he was explicitly denouncing bigotry and violence, where he called on people to come together. And the fact is that there actually is a violence problem on both the left and the right. In recent years, Americans have seen violent protests in everywhere from Portland, Berkeley, Ferguson, Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Brooklyn, 
Baltimore, all throughout the country, people have experienced these violent protests. There was an assassination attempt against Republicans by a totally mainstream progressive leftist activist. And there is a problem on all sides and people need to come together to denounce all of those things and not tar the entire Democratic Party as being part of the leftist violence and not tar the entire Republican Party as being part of the rightist violence. Steve, quickly, we're going to... Oh my gosh, she stole my term. Maybe not knowingly, or maybe it's just like great minds think alike. Progressive leftist. I love calling these losers that. Okay, so that that was that, and what she pointed out, she pulled the pants down on the uh, left stream media by pointing out that all of this violence is is on the left, and you know you had some neo Nazis that were confronted by by communists and that started more violence but this i thought was interesting it really needs to be condemned it's the black lives matter co-founder saying the uh, first amendment doesn't the protect free really speech called all sides on saturday it was essentially grouping white supremacists i'm, I'm sorry she's saying the first amendment doesn't uh protect hate speech what mm. what the left calls hate speech and do you know what hate speech is? It's anything they, they disagree don't with. Like. And counter protesters together. Uh, Black Lives Matter were among some of those counter protesters. Uh, draw a distinction for me, if you will. MSNBC today. Well, I think what's important in this moment is. Uh, White nationalists are actually fighting to take away people's rights. Uh, Black Lives Matter and groups like Black Lives Matter are fighting for equality. And um, yeah. communism, speech, and which is sister, uh, what is we're seeing coming out of white nationalist groups, uh, is not protected on the First Amendment rights. And so I think that's important that we uh, really? really uh, no, it actually is. It, where, it, it, where, that where, is a speech. Love speech. You don't need a First Amendment. Where in the Constitution does it say? Free speech, except that which Democrats believe is hate speech. In her and, mind. And uh, let me guess, Katie Tour, whatever the heck her name is, Never is going to challenge her on it? No, no. Whatever the leftist says is God-given truth, according to freaking no, MSNBC and CNN. Not ta not challenged at all. I watched the whole thing. She just kissed her rear. It was absolutely absolutely despicable. Okay, now let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit more about Charlottesville. So the Charlottesville police chief, a gentleman by the name of Al Thomas, said, quote, we were hoping for a peaceful event. <laughs> yeah, in what freaking world? <laughs> How'd that work out? Hey, so hey, hey, what hey, could go what's wrong? his name? Al, Chief Al, get your head out of the sand. You know, what could go wrong? You got... A neo-Nazi group or or groups, racists that have gotten a permit, and I read that they do this every year to rally in that in that area, and then all over social media are these antifa antifa communists uh, organizing to show up with their, their baseball bats in paramilitary gear and, and their black hoods to, you know, cause violence. None of these guys are angels. None of these guys are, they, they both sides should be thoroughly, thoroughly condemned. But this guy, he basically admitted, and I wrote this, wrote about this today on the politistic.com, uh, he admitted they were not prepared. Mm -hmm. He listen to this quote. We did, did they give them room to destroy? Ba yeah, they 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 basically did. We did make attempts to keep the two sides separate. However, we can't control which side someone enters the park. Now catch this. This is how naive this guy is. We had agreements and worked out a security plan. To bring the groups in and set and in separate entrances again, they decided to change the plan and entered the park in different directions. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding? Are you that naive? You mean these skinheads 
and America hating commies didn't go by your script? <laughs> they didn't they didn't follow my playbook. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should put it maybe you should have put it on um Craigslist and then pay twenty five dollars an hour like some of these other things are doing, dude. We were hoping for a peaceful event, he said. Now li listen to this, because he is not shy about calling out the Nazis as quote alt right. But there there's no condemnation of you know the lefties, the commies. We were certainly this is a quote, we were certainly not intimidated by the firepower of the alt right. However, it was prudent to make sure that officers were equipped to go out and deal directly with the violence at hand, he said. Originally, we had our officers out in their everyday uniform. So they knew this stuff. They knew the feces was going to hit the fan. And they didn't have their people in, in, in riot gear. He said, we were hoping for a peaceful event. We urged leaders from both sides. Both sides. Oh, there's, there's two sides. Hmm. He sounds like Trump. You can't say they're both sides. There's only one side. He said there's both sides. Where's the outrage? Both sides to engage in a nonviolent demonstration. Once the violence erupted, once the plan was altered, we had to quickly transition our officers into their protective gear. So they didn't even have officers ready in protect protective gear from the get-go. They were not prepared. Now, Fox News reporter Doug McElway reported over the weekend, and he was on scene during the anarchy and mayhem. He reported, and he was told by police there that they were ordered to stand down because the area was deemed too unsafe for mm. even the police. So they knew what was coming down a pike. And this police chief... Charlottesville Police Chief Al Thomas, he denied that. I'd like to know who that officer is who allegedly made those remarks. That is simply not true. So he flatly denied it. Meanwhile, Trump said today, trying to, you know, throw the media a bone, trying to assuage their hate, racism is evil. And those who cause violence and in its names are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. So, I mean, that that's pretty clear. I, I'm actually triggered a little bit by that because he didn't call out the violent thugs on the left. Right. I mean, they're both on the left, but you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, this Charlottesville guy, the, this police chief, you, you, you just wonder what the hell is going on. Because if you remember back, it wasn't long ago that the Democrat Charlottesville mayor, Mike Siner, and it is S-I-G-N-E-R, I guess that's how you say it. Signer? S-I-G, I guess. I don't know what he signed, but he signed, must sign a lot of things. But uh, he declared the city the capital hmm. of the resistance. Hmm. That was his quote. Of the resistance at a rally held in January following the election of President Donald Trump. Hmm. So he or, he actually organized a rally to announce his plan to, quote, resist the Trump administration. So I really wonder how much of this was staged. Hmm. How much of it was like, let's allow this violence to happen. Right. And then let's pin it on Trump. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to plan all that. No, it To wouldn't. organize it. And it especially wouldn't. when this guy... Is you know part of the resistance, which means he's a commie pinko, right? Right, and just to show you that the left, the left will 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 just take 
any situation and try to twist it to their advantage. Ivanka Trump, Trump's daughter, actually put out a statement that if it were Chelsea Clinton, they'd be celebrating. But she got attacked for it. Yeah. She got attacked for And she's a liberal course, Democrat. She's a liberal Democrat. Doesn't Her name matter. She happens to be Trump, so it doesn't matter. Yep. Yep. Doesn't matter at all. Okay, let's look at the uh, tomorrow. You might be listening to this tomorrow. It might be already happening, but we, we do this late at night because we know there's some night owls out there like us that, you know, do other things during the day and, you know, maybe can't listen to Rush Limbaugh during the day, maybe can't listen to Glenn Beck or Mark Levin or whatever. And, uh, you know, you want to hear some good conservative, solid uh, dialogue during during your, your evening hours. Uh, President Trump today, he doubled down on his endorsement of Mitch McConnell stooge Luther Strange. Here's a tweet from uh, President Trump. This was uh, at 3.38 a.m. Now, I don't know, 3.38 a.m.? I'm doing other things. I'm either sawing logs. I am? That's what it says. I don't know if that's our time or whatever, but... It's bright and early, but here's what the president tweeted. Luther Strange of the great state of Alabama has my endorsement. He is strong on border and wall, the military, tax cuts, and law enforcement. President Trump, no he isn't. You're duped. You're being a useful idiot. Mitch McConnell is owning you on this, and you should be ashamed. This is one of those examples where... Yes, we will praise the president when he's right, but when you're an idiot, we will call you an idiot, just like we would any other politician. Mm-hmm. So, Mark Levin, who has endorsed Mo Brooks, I actually, uh, there, there's two really solid conservatives in that race. I mean, who would be more balls to the wall? This is what kills me for the Trump agenda. Mm-hmm. Real proven fighters, guys that have big brass balls. You know, Mo Brooks would be great. He's a current congressman. He has a great conservative review liberty score. But there's also the Ten Commandments, Judge Roy Moore, who, you know, in polling has been leading the race. And he's willing to lose his job for his mm-hmm. values. You know, if you look up the Ten Commandments, Judge Roy Moore. And Trump is endorsing Luther Strange, who is McConnell's lapdog. And Mark Levin called him out today on Twitter. There Trump goes again, backing McConnell's lapdog against conservatives in Alabama and across the country. So this is absolutely shameful. And I hear, you know, I heard Mo Brooks interviewed today on, um, geez, what was it? I don't know if it was Levin, if it was Hannity, what it was. Glenn Beck, one of those. But he was saying, well, the president received some bad advice. No, the president should be smart enough Mm -hmm. and principled enough to know who the stooge is in this race. Don't blame his advisors. You blame him. He's supposed to be smart. He's supposed to be this great mind, great businessman. And he decided to go to bed with Mitch McConnell, who is stabbing in the back at every opportunity. We are almost out of time here, folks. We are going to wrap up. But the election in Alabama is tomorrow, August 15th. And it probably will result in no one over getting over 50% of the vote which means it will go to a runoff. But hopefully it's the two conservatives. Honey, final thoughts. Final thoughts. You know what? At a time when uh, the Ten Commandments has been under under attack by atheists, liberals all over the place. God haters. Shame on Trump for not backing the judge. Or even Mo Brooks. Either one of them would be Far better than Luther the Strange. Thank you again for listening to The Burke Brigade. The Burke Brigade brought to you by The, the Liberty Daily. The LibertyDaily.com, your drudge alternative. 
go to thelibertydaily.com. Thank you for tuning in this evening to God Bless America. The Burke Brigade. Hashtag Burke Brigade. Good night.